good afternoon. Uh, my name is Miran Gafari, and uh, thanks. I'm presenting my uh, dissertation. This is uh, first of all. I would like to thank uh, all the committee members, uh, my advisor, my family and friends, and whoever attend to this uh, defense. Uh, the title is uh, Machine Learning for Lifespan Inference from a Time Lapse uh, Microfluidic Images of Dividing East Cells. This work has been done under supervision of Dr. Hong Ching from Department of Computer Science and Engineering and also Department of uh, Biology, uh, Geology and Environmental Science. Uh, the, the outline covers uh, chapter one introduction chapter two data set and uh, challenges, chapter three classification models, chapter four detection models, uh, chapter five uh, family tree algorithms and the lifespan, chapter six visualization tools, chapter four uh, future work and conclusion covers in chapter eight. Uh, solar aging. Uh, Body East sarcomesis servicia is an effective model for studying aging. Uh, what is budding yeast? If we just follow this uh, arrow, th that small cell attached to this uh, big cell, that's known as budding yeast. And this uh, basically over time, this population can grow based on the uh, cell lifespan. Why we actually pick the yeast? Uh, most metabolics and uh, solar pathway in human can be studied in yeast. Uh, yeast cells divide in similar manner to human cells. Uh, it is flexible and less regulated model to work with. And that could be uh, very actually beneficial for cancer cell development uh, and uh, so many other uh, medical treatments and including aging. And, uh, here, uh, so if the population of these cells, uh, as I mentioned, depends on the cell uh, li uh, life cycle. To have a better idea, if we have a look at this uh, life cycle, uh, this is, a, let's say this is a time point one when the cell actually generated from the initial point. And the T here is represented time point one and the time point two and time point three and so on. That's the a small bot is actually on the outside wall of the cell. This is a start to growing. And over the time that becomes bigger and bigger. At some point, the gray color here does represent the nucleus. They start to separate it in two parts. And one part remains inside the cell, the mother cell itself, and the other part it moves to other part of developing cell. And gradually this becomes two separate cells, but still attached to each other. And at some point there is complete separation. That process could happen so many times, depends on the cell, type of the cells. And uh, but yeast cells, it could happen 26 times. And uh, that's to get a better actually uh, understanding, we can represent this with the cell family tree. This is the initial point of cells. This is when the cells become dead. And this during this process, that cells can produce a number of the cells. The survival rate of these cells called chronological lifespan. The, actually, the number of division called replicative lifespan. These are the key elements, actually one of the key elements, I would say, to, for considering a solar aging. There are some questions. Uh, so how we can dissection these cells? How we can separate these cells? How, do, how to detect the cell divisions? How to generate a family tree? How we can counter uh, RLS or replicative lifespan of the cell? Generally, there are two methods. Uh, it could be manual conventional method, which is that they have a culture pad and then use the needles to separate these cells manually. It is it's a tedious uh, actually method and a time consuming. The other method is uh, you can use the fast growing device called microfluid device that has been used in many applications like a chem chemical, biological, optics, informa information technology, including single cells imaging analysis. This device actually uh, they made of the silicon, uh, glass, or uh, polymers, and uh, basically the um, uh, cells uh, actually mix with uh, some sort of medium and going through these traps. The design of these traps uh, depends on the experimental, 
and the cells remains inside these traps and because of medium flow, the divisions happen and the uh, smaller cells actually at outlet, it would be washed away and goes uh, carries on same process again. This is shows us some actually uh, how that is works. So this is medium flow, it contains some cells and going through these micro channels, there is a lens here to capture these uh, images. Uh, and then this is outlet and going out. And this is a better representation. And this is a uh, cell uh, in a microscopic image. This is actually another comparison for needles with the cell when they're using, these are much bigger than the cell. The, the problem with this macrofluidic device images, they are relatively low resolution. And this is due to capturing error, blurring, uh, shift focus, or uh, a trapped deformation. Some of them, the, since they're made of the silicon, they have some deformation. The overall goal of this uh, research uh, was that uh, to have a, a system, the input would be macrofluidic images, and we can use a machine learning to classify these traps and identify it, uh, cells. Also, we want to generate a family tree and uh, count a replicate fly span. The, the whole goal is to make this system uh, automatically, since many of the, this uh, cells division and family tree, uh, uh, replicate fly span works in manual process. And the data set and challenges. Uh, this is uh, some uh, from one of the collaborators, they contact us, uh, they provide us some microfluidic images and uh, they ask us if we can do some uh, RLS counting in an automatic way and also we can generate a family tree. This is uh, the, uh, actually the chip, they build it themselves, they made it themselves and then they use it in for the experimental. It's called high throughput East Aging Analysis. And it has a four chip and each chip has a four channels and each pair of the channels sharing one inlet and an and, and inlet and, and outlet. So the medium flow going through these channels and the loading cells happen at this stage, cells going through these channels and there is a camera on the top of that to capture images. And this is what is inside of these channel, micro channels. There are the traps. Uh, the dimensional traps is six micrometers inlet and uh, three micrometers outlet. The height is five micrometers. This design based on the east uh, cell size. And uh, on average, this east cell size is around four to five micrometers. This is giving you a better presentation in terms of how this works. The dot, the green dot represents a, a mother cell and uh, the, just because continuous uh, medium flow going through these traps and they uh, stay inside the traps and uh, this daughter cells washed away from the outlet and uh, goes, this process continues until they reach the end of the device. The pink dot represents a daughter cell. During this process, two events could happen. When the, actually the mother cell inside the trap uh, and then start producing a bot or daughter cell in the direction of medium flow. The other uh, situation could happen. There's a mother cell inside the trap and daughter cells start growing in the opposite direction of growth, uh, of medium flow. And that's another example. That's is quite a challenging part to deal with in terms of counting and monitoring. In terms of uh, RLS experimental result, uh, they give us the, this is based on manual counting. Uh, this process is automatic, but in terms of counting is manual. So we try to actually uh, help them with this process. And uh, this is a time point zero at that time point after 100 minutes, they count one and 820, 10, 15, and uh, 20 uh, baht they counted. And that's a 20, 23 baht they counted at this time point. It's, it's around three, 34 hours and 20 minutes. And this, at uh, this stage, cell becomes old and I stop making any division then basically they stop counting. This is a quite critical, uh, critical uh, point where to stop the counting. And there was a one, some of the challenges we had. And this is uh, the image actually, the, the sequence images they provided to us. And there's a time lapse. It has a 10 minutes uh, the interval between each uh, images. 
and uh, has a hundred and of uh, hundred and four traps, uh, sixteen rows. Each row has a six or seven uh, traps. The cells going from the top to the bottoms. At some point, this cells becomes old and blocking the inlet of the traps, and they make a so this sort of messy situation or overcrowded cell. And uh, if you realize at the at time point one, that arrow was very close to this line. But as the reaching the last image, this is a, there is a gap there. So there is a, some alignment issue with these images. These are some uh, problems we had to deal with. There was alignment issue. There is a distance, as I mentioned, between this uh, the edge of the image and uh, this edge of this line of the traps. And then this is another last image that actually is moves up that number 10, this is guideline number. And here this brightness issue and also uh, we had to, when initially we started to do segmentation, uh, if we can uh, count these cells or identify these cells with the, some uh, conventional method of segmentation. Uh, when we did the segmentation, the many cases we had a misdetection and it was uh, big, since the size of the cells, they are very small, we had to actually we have a different approach to solve this problem. So what we did, we start partitioning these images based on the number of the trap. And we picked the good images. Uh, we did uh, three times, we did the alignment uh, actually. One, we picked the good images, we then we did the pixel to pixel transformation alignment. And then again, we did a, a centralization alignment twice. And when the, we pushed the image to the center and we start doing the partitioning. At some point we, in the theory, these traps are stationary, they should have any, this, the old distance should be fixed. But when we go in through this partitioning, the sum of these traps, the distance were different. So we had to uh, actually do some adjustment in terms of weight, width, uh, height, uh, columns, uh, uh, crop image, uh, coordinate and offset. Offset is uh, basically the, when we have a six uh, row of the traps or seven of the uh, seven traps that's a we then we have a sequence of image for each uh, trap and then we start doing classification we try to separate these traps when they have if there is a trap and c that means not non cell available mc when is a mother cell and mdc mother daughter cell and ex that means extra cells any trap more than two cells we label them as extra cells. Uh, here, that was actually a basic uh, classification. We convert the image to binary from gray scale to binary. And we did a feature extraction. And uh, in because there was a, some of these images had the noise. So we, we said, OK, anything bigger than three pixels uh, would be considered a cell. And then we did the segmentation and based on area, eccentricity, and cell number, we did the actually classification. And when we did classification, we had uh, so many errors. This is one of them. This is a trap with uh, four cells, but also uh, trap itself considered as a cell as well because of the intensity of image. Here, there is another situation with uh, five, I think uh, maybe more than six cells, this is becomes very noisy as well, detected so many uh, extra cells. Uh, here two cells attached to each other, there is two cells but very close range and basically there are three cells but here they consider as one cell here. This is another example, uh, uh, still the traps consider as one cell. This situation gets worse when there is an overcrowded situation. And when there are so many cells around the trap with this with almost similar intensity. And this is when so it's large cells and this is a large daughter cells. There are so many errors we had to actually work with. A classification model. So since we had that problem, we try to work with the, pick the, some uh, classification models and then we using the machine learning to classify these uh, uh, traps. Initially, we started with the four classes, uh, NC, MC, MDC, and EXC. And uh, when we tried these four classes, most of the uh, models, they're struggling to reach a 60 to 70% uh, accuracy. 
then we try to figure out the misclassification. We realize most of the models are struggling with the, when there are two cells inside the trap. And this is mother cell the inside and the daughter cell below the mother cell. This is, as I mentioned earlier, this is a situation when the cell is moving in direction of medium flow. And there was another situation, mother cell inside and the daughter cells above mother cell. That was when the cell start growing in opposite direction in the flow. So we separated these two classes and then we made them in the five classes. And we train our model on the, based on the five classes. But in biology, this doesn't make sense. So it doesn't matter the cells is below the mother cells, above mother cells. For, for that reason, so we combine this, the result has been combined in the, uh, one class. So we combine these two as MD classes. This is an example, mother cells inside and daughter cells below, and mother cells above, uh, daughter cells above mother cells. We tr the, the training image was 5,000 for our classes and test image was 896 for our classes. The, this, these are three models, uh, the uh, CNN models. Uh, that's uh, another CNN models. This, the first one is a baseline CNN with the, uh, two layers. We picked this model because of its simplicity. And this is another models with the uh, 13 layers. We picked this one we just want to do some comparison between these two models. What would be additional actually benefit that we're getting from the 11 layers? And we picked these models. Uh, this is another new architecture called capsule net. It has a different approaches and extracts more features from the data. Here's an example, the inconvolutional layer the scalar is the output, the output. So for the each of these uh, actually object on the face of the person, there is a, just a probability, one number probability. And uh, for the capsule net, you have a vector of the probability. That could be the distance between each element of the image. It could be distance between the mouth and nose, these eyes, and even rotation and also the yeah, even the notation, the distance, and uh, that was a one more thing. Distance probation, I have to just hold on that one. Distance notation and, and brightness, I think. Oh, just if I remind it, I will I mention it. So if in a CNN, model. If we actually give these two images, the probability would be almost same. But in a capsule net, there would be different result for each uh, of these elements. So this image, it would be different result compared to this image. And the advantage is a less information loss for this model, uh, capsule net, and fewer sample requires to train the model. And, but it is computationally expensive. This is a result uh, of the accuracy in terms of accuracy. What we did, we did uh, some comparison between uh, uh, two models, uh, all, uh, all the three models. And also we try to test these models when we're doing a data augmentation. Uh, data augmentation means when you are shortage of the data, uh, in particular in medical field, they, when there is a shortage of data, we can use the original data and then we add some extra rotation or brightness uh, or zoom or uh, so many uh, the options available and we making an extra uh, actually data from the original data and then we can do training on that. And uh, based on this, actually this is for individual class, uh, the CNN 13 did better than others. And capsule net, that was only model did uh, great when there are actually two cells inside the uh, trap. And this is a result with the augmentation. Uh, there wasn't much improvement for uh, CNN 13, but there was some much um, improvement for the capsule net and CNN uh, two. The number of uh, image actually 180 for the NC model uh, class, 176 for MC class, MD class was 
that's a combination of 180 for 280 so 360 and extra class was 180. In addition to that, we said, okay, let's uh, combine these models and see if it's, we can make, have a better performance. In machine learning, minimizing bias and variance error is a challenging task. Weight average assembly models is one method to approach, overcome this issue. And in general, the, you can train a model over multiple subset of a, a training data set and then we, uh, test uh, an average uh, test result. And the other method is, this is when there are not many models available. And uh, the other method is to train all, uh, all the models on the same data set, then you average a test result. That's the, which, that's the one we actually picked that uh, option. Here, the, there is a result with the augmentation and the, or, or Yellow color represent actually assembled models is did better than other uh, model. Here, this is the accuracy result, very close to CNN 13. And this is a recall result and the precision result is still uh, assembled model did better than other uh, three models. And this is a precision and recall for individual classes, a uh, class. And this is the number of image for test result and the uh, Correct prediction for the, this is CNN2, this is CNN13, uh, capsule net. And here shows the misdetection for CNN, uh, CNN13 was less than the other models. In terms of uh, two uh, classes, which we combined them, uh, the correct prediction, most of the models did uh, quite good in the same classes, but in terms of the actually MDDC, the CNN model they had a miss, most of misdetection actually in the ten extra cells, but that was opposite for the CNN 13 and CNN uh, capsule net. Most detection was in a mother cell and mother cell. A summary separating two classes into uh, MD class in the two classes uh, was an effective factor to improve the accuracy. CNN2 accuracy actually with augmentation was at 90%. CNN13 accuracy with augmentation was 98%. Capsule net 90%. There was a 8% 8, 8 actually improvement with the 11 layers here. Combining the model achieved a greater performance. Overall, each model, uh, each single uh, deep learning model had an uneven performance in the four biological classes. Detection models. So well, since we did the classification, so we, we want to see, okay, what's the variation in cell size? We want to actually detect the cells and then detect the area of the cells. That's uh, give us a lot of information when we want to actually consider a family tree. And we uh, actually, we did the two, uh, two separate, uh, experimental work. So we separated these two object detection to and feature extraction. Object detection, we train each model with the, the 10, 100 images and uh, similar here as well. The dimension of image was 60 by 60. And in terms of test for object detection, we tested with 30 images, but two dimensions, 60 by 60 and 512, 512. The reason for, we actually, we went for the larger uh, increase the image size. Uh, that was based on uh, combined by, uh, interpolation. Actually, is a linearly we increase the image size. And uh, most of the, these object detection models, they are trained to uh, detect the object with a large size. When it becomes uh, small cells, this, most of the, uh, these models struggling to detect the object. We just want to see, the, uh, see what's the difference, the comparison. And in terms of feature extraction, we just tested 40,564 images in, te, in uh, dimension of 60 by 60. The other, these are the two models we actually compared. A YOLO, the output, it gives you a bounding box with the confidence rate and the class probability. And CNN model, that's give us the extra actually uh, features, which is a mask of the cell, and that's uh, based on the region, uh, actual region of interest aligned. This is uh, happens with uh, 
biolinear interpolation and this is some mathematical attempt to find the cell boundary. Yeah. This is a some result, uh, mask RCNN and YOLO, that's some comparison. Uh, here, there was an uh, extra uh, cell detection by mask RCNN when there was a hundred epochs and augmentation, no augmentation, but YOLO did actually correctly match the ground truth. Uh, this is another example. We did the data augmentation for, for the C max RCNN. And when we did that, it correct the cell size. And so here, this is a comparison. It matched the uh, actual ground truth. But in terms of detection, all of these points, they did the same detection. This is another example. Uh, both models, they had the arrows. So max RCNN, again, it picked another extra cell which is a reality in the four, in ground truth shows four cells. And YOLO detect actually less, has a less detection, is a three cells. And when we actually train the model for 400 epochs and ground truth, that's a result of uh, mass or cinematic ground truth. This is another example with the uh, bigger dimensions, is a 512 by 512. For the first image, the mask RCN and YOLO did a good detection. It was matched the ground truth. But the second one, uh, YOLO detect actually half of that cell in terms of the cell area. And what mask RCN and it actually almost correctly. This is actually performance result. Uh, we total image, we tested 30 images and uh, YOLO detected 81 cells and mass RCN detected 64. Uh, overall uh, performance mean average precision was 90.6% and mass RCN was 73%. In terms of feature extraction, we trained both model for uh, any traps uh, without a cell and uh, any traps with cell. And that's uh, actually the output of uh, the each model, uh, image number, uh, trap number, time number, cell number, coordinate, confidence rate, accuracy, and area. Uh, this is a, some actually comparison result with the linear regression to see if the cell area matched the ground truth. And uh, this, we tested 28 images and 50 cells. And this is a p-value, this is quite a small, and this is R, R square. A lot of in terms of counting. This is, uh, shows the yellow, uh, uh, blue color represents um, yellow and the uh, orange color represents uh, mask or CNN. And so in general, the yellow detected more cells. And when we did a comparison here, when the, uh, there was a uh, one cell inside the trap, mask or CNN did better. When there were two cells inside the trap, mask or CNN did better, which was is the main concern actually we would need to work on. and. For the re remaining, when there were more than two cells, uh, YOLO did better than other uh, mask RCN. And in summary, we evaluated two models, uh, object detection models for the, uh, uh, the two models for object detection and feature extractions. YOLO actually detect more cells and very sensitive to noise. Uh, Max Ronin did uh, better in terms of cell area. When I'm saying uh, cell area, that means the number of the pixels. And it, uh, I mentioned cell area or cell size, that's the number of pixels since we're dealing with image. And did better uh, detection when the number of the cells inside trap is less than two. Overall, each uh, for counting cells, uh, YOLO is a better model and mass Gaussian could be good model for detecting cell area. Family tree algorithms and lifespan. Um, so when we have a two cell, three cells here, two three cells here, and two cells there, so how we can know uh, these cells washed away and disappears here, or these two cells move down and push these cells away? Uh, how we can identify this? Uh, so we went through this um, data set. We got it from the feature extractions. And the they said the order is basically each, uh, it was CSV format. And each row of data is, is uh, uh, correspond to the one cell with the features. And if there are image with the two cells, so it would be time point one, cell number one, time point one, cell number two. And that's continuous for each images. When we looked at this data set, we uh, see the 
5.8% uh, of that uh, traps without a cell, 12.2% uh, uh, of them with the single cells, about half uh, of the 50%, 48.4% uh, two cells, and the remaining with, uh, cells with the extra, uh, more than three cells. Uh, total actually cells detected is what 87,254. So based on this information, uh, we said, okay, once we have a data from single cells, let's say uh, how much these cells moves over the time. We calculated equilibrium distance between these cells. And uh, we did uh, actually a histogram of that and we calculated the p-value. And based on p-value, uh, we figured out there are would be two cells actually that says you and the distance would be two cells that says how much is more when uh, when i said the distance in terms it would be two pixels when i said, actually mentioned any, anywhere about a cell size or cell area would be number of the pixels so we have in this uh, we got this information about a single cell then based on that we wrote algorithms to act actually uh, tag these cells, so I uh, give them some ID. Uh, so total, the N here is a total number of the image, which is uh, 391. And uh, this would be current time point, let's say this is row number two and the K minus one would be the, the row number one. And this is, so you pick the coordinate of the each uh, cell from each row, and then here we start from the backwards. So we are, we, are, we are going from the last image to the first image. This is because we want to have uh, some uh, information from a previous image and we give an ID to current image. And uh, here we, this is loop, the three loops happening here. And here we calculate the distance and we use this uh, data set to calculate the p-value. This is a, uh, the delta D, which we has it from single cell, and this is a result, and this is a hepat null hypothesis. And once we have the p-value, we pick the maximum uh, value from the, that uh, p-value, and then we give you processor ID for that particular cell. This is, uh, I'll give you, this is here, it gives you a better understanding. Let's say we have a two image with the two, three cells here, three cells here. And uh, we calculated the uh, equilibrium distance between each cells individually. Then for the second cell, a similar process, and for the third cell, similar process. And then we have a table of distance. Uh, based on this table of distance, we calculate the p-value. And uh, th this p-value, they have a different value, and we pick the maximum. And uh, when we pick the maximum value, the, we pick the, the index of that p-value would be the uh, the processor ID for that cell. For here, the distance between these two cells are very close. So well, this is clearly very close. There's not, not much movement. So it would be ID one. That's the cell number one. Day. That's the cell number two. There was a little bit of change and this is a longer distance that was changed. That's how we got the uh, ID for each cell. Uh, so, Next, uh, this is actually producer ID we have. Uh, this is each time point, let's say time point 27, we give the one. That means there is only one cell inside the trap, is a single mother cell. 1.1, that means cell is with the bots uh, start growing. This is an example here. And 1.2, that means mother cell and daughter cells, these are two cells. And at some point there is a one, one, there is no one here because the interval between two images is 10 minutes. There are some missing information there. And uh, so we here, when we see the 1.1, 1 .1, we assuming there is a divisions happen here that this is carries on and one is happiest here. And this is uh, another example and so on. This is example of one of the family tree from time point 25 to 137. The long branches in yellow color represent a mother cell and green branches in green color, uh, the short branches in green color represent a daughter cell. By counting this number of green, color, uh, green actually colors the branches, we can count a number of divisions. This is a prototype evaluation. Uh, this is a, a cell uh, corresponding to each time point. 
at uh, it, it trap uh, 27, this is uh, time 27.1 and 28.1. This is a start cell with the bot and then the separates uh, here. This is 29.1, this is mother cell. 30.1, this is mother cell and continues. And this is a, a daughter cell basically. With that cell. And this is another situations happen here. And this is continuous. Well, look at this uh, uh, graph. You can count the number of division as well. And uh, so since we have an experimental result, we did uh, some comparison between the computational result and experimental result. And this is the initial result we had. Uh, the the p-value, it was 0 0.02. And the uh, R-square wasn't that good. And uh, the, this is a new result, current result with uh, some limited uh, traps. And uh, the current result, it shows the better p-value, the improvement, and also the R-square. This is, uh, we have uh, some of the, uh, uh, member of the chain lab who help us uh, code a bit uh, to actually, with the graph analysis uh, to improve this accuracy. In summary, we present a, a likely algorithm that can generate a cell family tree from the time lapse microfluidic images of a trapped E cell. In uh, this family tree, the longest branches represent the dividing mother cell, and short branches represent the histories of daughter cell. The reflective lifespan of the mother cell can be calculated as a total of number of short branches. We use the improved distribution to describe a random cell movement and generate a probabilistic score to track the cell between the different time points. Overall, prediction of our prototype algorithms correlate with the experimental observation and algorithm is useful for the aging research. So, uh, it, so here is with the visualization tool. Uh, overall, uh, each time we want to actually uh, test our result and evaluate it, the result, we had to go through all sub images. We checked them, okay, let's say what's happened in time point 300, 302, 390 or something. Uh, the, then uh, we were actually, we tried to find a way how we can visualize uh, uh, how we can visualize the uh, how we can visualize the traps? How we can visualize a cell movement? How we can uh, visualize a cell division time points? How we can uh, vi visualize a cell size variation? And uh, we went to the all the uh, our data set and the result, and then we figure out if we have an image uh, like a trap with the two cells. And if we kind of pick the actual central, central point of these cells, and we pick the one uh, reference point anywhere on the image, then we can calculate the equilibrium distance. Once we have the information, we can map this on circular plot. And the central point would be the reference point, and uh, based on the actually, we divide the 300, uh, depends on the number of the actually sub images we have. And we can divide it by 360 and that gives you time point on the each reduce. And so let's say this is a trap with the uh, no cells be presented with the white color. If there's a single cell uh, inside the trap, uh, we present it with the red color and two cells, different colors. And then we have three cells, we have the light blue and purple. And for to producing this the actual plot, you, you just need a coordinate of those cells. And if you have an area, it gives you additional actually information we can add it to the plot. Uh, so since we got that uh, plot, uh, we call it mu plot, and we can generate uh, for each of these traps one uh, plot. And it's a 2D and then interactive. And the way we can read this plot, uh, so anywhere you can see that actually there's a dot here, each dot representing a cell. So if it's the each line connected with the two cells, that means uh, two cells inside the image. And uh, the short distance between dot, that means there is a cell with a bot, the start uh, division cycle. This is starting here. Then there is another situation when there is a cell above the mother cell. That shows that that, that line is a reference line. That means uh, actually the inside here, the reference line. Uh, in, so the, at the inlet of the outlet of trap. 
that shows the mother cell, a daughter cell is above mother cell. This is another example when there is no cell uh, inside the, here is another example when there is no cell inside the trap. This is any uh, black dot here, that means a single cell. That could be division point. Let's say from here, there is another one here, there is another one here and here. That could be division points for each, uh, each time point. And when we have an overcrowded situation, uh, we can represent them with different color, with different uh, dots. So if uh, each dot representing a number of the cell, each line actually representing a number of the cells at that time point. And then each dot, they have a different colors. And then each cells can be tractable. So you can track these cells, how they actually moving, how they growing over that time. And some of these cell size, they are bigger and small. That depends on the cell size, which we can add it to the uh, plot. Uh, this is a, uh, some uh, examples when the cells actually making a division and that's corresponding uh, with the plot. This shows that the three cells here, and at some point there's only cell here. Then they start making a division with the three cells. And is at point there is no cell, and then two cells. This keeps making a division here. When there is a line between the, these two lines, that means there is a mother cells inside the trap, daughter cell below the trap. And when is something's up from here? That means the cells above the mother cells. And when it becomes the only dot here, that means pretty much cell is dead and there is no much division happens. And that should be representation of the cell death. This is important how to actually uh, find it, where to stop the counting. We also, we tested these uh, tools for mass fibroblast uh, macroscopic images. And uh, this is an image, a time-lapse images with the uh, 37 images. But since these uh, images uh, contains around 100 cells, we cropped a portion of that uh, image with uh, around eight to nine cells and applied to our tools. Uh, this is shows the how we can actually track the cells. This is a cell at this time point, at point one, and this is a cell at time point 37. You can actually track the cells, how it's move in terms of cell variation and in terms of cell size. And uh, here we can see how much that cell moved for over the time from this time point to this time point. In addition, you can, uh, we, did, we, we tested how we can uh, use the, this plot to counter replicative lifespan. The uh, red star representing uh, actually experimental results and the counting the 20, 20 divisions. But, and then when we're using this plot, we can actually each these lines uh, close to each other as a one branch, we can count them as a one division, one division here. And when we go through these, we can count uh, uh, almost 21 divisions with the one situation unknown, but still countable. This is very useful actually uh, for the counting uh, uh, replicative lifespan. In summary, we develop an R package based on circular plot method known as MUPLAR to visualize the cells movement and solar division events at the hundreds of the time points. R method is 3D interactive and easy to use. We demonstrated the utility of our method to describe the events of division, dividing yeast cells and migrating mouse fibroblast cells. Uh, overall, uh, nuclear visualized sensor could be applied to other type of microfluidic devices and, uh, and time-lapse microscopic imaging experiments. I would, I would say this uh, tools is available on the GitHub repository and free to use and a feature work. As, so when we actually doing the counting uh, uh, RLS, we had some problems uh, to uh, over counting problems. So the, on average, YOLO, it was counting 35 RLS and then max oxygen counting 46. Experimental result shows 21. And when we checked uh, this, then we have to know actually where we to stop counting when, when the cells becomes dead. 
and I, as I mentioned earlier. So we check the, these images, uh, cell areas, and we realize if we sum these uh, uh, for each image with the uh, depends number of the cells, if we sum the cell area, that could be give us some signal. And then over when we're doing a signal analysis, we can do actually some prediction where to stop the, uh, we will stop counting. This each peak uh, give you some uh, the time points, and we can count the divisions. And the other uh, feature work it is actually cloud platform. Uh, we are working. This is as at early stage. Uh, we want to researchers or biologists they can upload their, their images, microscopic images or microfluidic images, and they can have a family tree with uh, some analysis and uh, RLS counting. In conclusion, we analyzed uh, uh, the microfluidic uh, time-lapse uh, images by applying image uh, partitioning and alignment methods. We compared three uh, classification models to classify each phase of each cell cycle from the microscope. Microfluidic images, we compare YOLO and mask RCN models for cell detection and feature actions. We develop an algorithm to max maximum likelihood to generate a cell producer ID and family tree. We estimate the RLS and compare the computational result with the experimental result. We develop an uh, package visualization tools, MUPLOT to, uh, for 2D time-lapse microscopic images. These are some of uh, publication uh, references. And uh, at the end, I would like to express uh, the utmost uh, gratitude to my advisor, Dr. Hong Ching, who has been a mentor a guide on this journey, his positive advice, support, a keen analysis, and constant encouragement helped me to see this project to a conclusion. I would like to thank to Kim Sap, uh, Ms. Kim Sap, for her support and assistance at the Sim Center. I would like to thank to member of the uh, Chin Lab for their help, including Cody Witt for his uh, help with the uh, graph analysis. Last but not the least, thank to my, my family and my friends uh, for their encouragement and support through this process. This uh, work has been actually partially supported with the two NSF career awards and internal CEACSE award from the University of Tennessee Chattanooga, also NIH grant and all the simulation have been performed on the server at Sim Center, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Uh, thank you. I welcome any question you may have. Yes, uh, public questions. <laughs> so, yeah. I have a question uh, about uh, the performance uh, regarding the ensemble and the CNN and the data augment. Uh, okay. Could you please uh, go to the slides? I think around uh, maybe uh, 16, 14. Uh, okay, no, no, so just stop here. Uh, I think this is the one, uh, yeah, including the, which contains the results of Ensemble. Uh, uh, well, either way should be fine. Let's go to, maybe go, go to CNN uh, part first. Okay, CNN. Oh, you mean uh, for classification? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can see that. Right yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is the first slide, and I have uh, some questions. Uh, as uh, as uh, you can see, uh, there are two modes presented in this slide. One is without uh, data augment, and uh, the other is with data augmentation. Uh, my question is, why with data augmentation, we see the performance slightly goes down in some categories? Did you do something to figure out the reason behind this uh, Well, uh, the, the, all, uh, the one of them actually, the, uh, that was a is change, I would say here would be CNN as a capsule net. They had a little bit of actually, there was a uh, decreasement, yeah, the decreasement here. The, 
And that's because of is based on actually is capturing, uh, uh, when we did augmentation, we rotate the image a little bit and then uh, with the some angle. That's affected accuracy of uh, actual capsule net because it's also, or uh, any rotation on the image or any orientation would be affected actually the probability of a uh, model. Well, uh, the question here is, so let's compare, let's uh, say another uh, part, let's say MC, CapsNet. So okay. we see the performance has a significant improvement with yes, data yes, or yeah. augmentation. Yeah. Then while in the MDC, then we can see the performance slightly go, it goes down a little bit. MD, because as I said, these are the two models and most of the models actually are struggling with this part of where there are two cells because cells with mother cells on the top of the daughter cells, it could be actually uh, rotate to the left or to the right. That would be different actually is difficult to identify. And, uh, but most of the model is struggling with this actually, the, this part of the, this class, yeah. Okay, thank you. Another question is about this uh, ensemble. So I think uh, you need to go ahead to go back, uh, go ahead to some slides. Forward. Oh, right yeah, here. For, yeah, yeah, go forward. Yeah, go forward, go forward. I'm okay. interested in the, the performance. Yes, here, 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 yeah. here. So uh, to me, it's interesting to see that ensemble got beaten in some categories. Yes, that's right. In yeah, the here it was a little bit actually there's a difference. Yeah, yeah, that was a little bit. Uh, and uh, that's the only one actually, yeah. And well, you, you can just, see for precision, yeah. uh, yes. So uh, yeah, you yeah. mentioned the uh, MC, uh, a uh, yeah, loss MC, in comparison yeah, to CapsNet. Yeah. And yeah. also in EFC, uh, I do not see any improvement uh, yeah, for yeah. ensemble. Actually, I even, may, may, if my guess, if uh, my guess is correct, maybe slightly go down a little bit, not a lot. And uh, yeah. for recall, for MDC, then we see uh, a clear go uh, performance uh, loss regarding ensemble. But if yeah. we put uh, a precision and the recall together, you may find that in MDC, Ensemble may improve the performance, but, but uh, in the recall part, MDC, the, because of Ensemble, you lose some performance, right? Could yeah. you please uh, let us know the reason behind this? Sorry, uh, I could actually I lost the what you mean here. Which so, okay, so I'll... just take a look at MDC. Let's just focus on the dataset MDC. Okay, MDC. Uh, in, in MDC, recall? for recall, you can see, uh, Performance is not as good as other uh, three uh, methods. But if we go to the precision, yeah. also uh, MDC, then you can see Ensemble actually is maybe the best. Yeah. Uh -huh. So what's so, the reason? So the okay, same uh, data set, the same methods, what's okay. the reason cause this problem? Okay, this is actually here, maybe give you some answer here. So MDUC here and MDDC, this is actually the, the class we always actually really strong with. We combine this, these two, uh, this class is combined of these two classes. So the most of the correction here are uh, it, for the each model here. When we, uh, we look at the, the mist detection, most of the actually for the CNN2, most of actually most of the misdetection here for is for when we are cells above the mother cell. And uh, here this mix around the 10, uh, 10 of them is mixed with extra cells. That, that was the one of the actually uh, problem we can maybe that's answer your questions. And other for C uh, CNN 13, uh, for misdetection, again, seven of them uh, with the MD up is mixed with the misdetect with the extra cells. It was quite opposite uh, CNN2. And here, this similar happens with the capsule net. And uh, with 52 of them is actually detected with extra cells. So 
that could be reason why that's uh, affect the recall or decision. As far okay. as I know, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I, I think this is, has something with uneven category uh, error. When, when you try to do a, a average, then you have this odd result uh, when you average it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good question. Yeah, that was a good question. Uh, uh, this actually, this paper, it took us around uh, 18 months back and forth. <laughs> uh, some people from the biology, they had a different idea. Some people from computer science, they had a different idea. It was, it took a long time, uh, especially the, yeah, the, this one, how we can explain to these people from the computer science and biology. That was uh, some of the. That's a very good uh, trick actually solve that. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, if we want to predict the biological class directly, it's, it's uh, performance is terrible. But yeah, that's right. After separate them, it's actually good. It's, uh, it, uh, it's a very good trick. It may be uh, applicable in some other situations. That this, uh, yeah, this uh, figure, is, it seems to uh, make the computer science people and biologists happy. Yeah, I agree. <laughs>